Hey, welcome back. So what we've done so far is we have a working GUI program that has two text fields. It has a Celsius text field and a Fahrenheit text field, and it has a convert button. Now if I go back and forth between the Celsius and the Fahrenheit fields, I do have some listeners attached so that as I go back and forth between the two, it'll print out which one has the current focus. Now, what we're going to do after this point is we're going to create a helper class and the helper class is going to do a couple of things. The helper class is going to keep track of which text field has the current focus and it's also going to have two cute little methods in it that will actually convert the Celsius to the Fahrenheit for me and also the Fahrenheit to Celsius. So it will actually do the mathematical work. Now, what you do is you go to the very end where this closing curly brace is. This is the curly brace which closes the My First GUI class. So it is possible to create a class inside of a class, but we're not there yet. We're not ready to do that. So make sure that your cursor is outside of the closing curly brace for the My First GUI class. And what you're going to do is you're going to type class helper with a beginning curly brace and then you'll have a closing curly brace which is going to be down here. But you don't have to add all the spaces yet because those will happen as you begin to type in the various things. Now this next part is very important because we're still learning how to code. So even though all of this is a block comment, I do want you to type that and here's the reason. It, while it's true that this class object is going to help me, it's called a helper, that really doesn't explain what helper is going to do. In other words, how is helper going to help? So if you're working on a team project and you create a class called helper, then you need to let other programmers who look at your code, you need to know, let them know what the helper class is all about. And that's why this block comment is so important. If you're just working by yourself, it's still a good idea because many times people will work on a project, step away from that project for several weeks or months, and then come back. And if they haven't properly documented their code, they'll be spending time figuring out, well, why did I create that thing? And so, yeah, I do want you to create this block object this, this block paragraph comment right here because I want to teach you the importance of commenting specific code. <clears throat> now not everything has to be commented but again helper while it's a nice name for this class I need to somehow explain what this class does. So this is a blueprint for a helper object. The helper object has several different functions. Okay number one a helper object has the instance variable has focus. This lets me know which text field has the current focus, the Celsius or the Fahrenheit field. Two, a helper object has two methods for setting and getting the has focus variable. Three, a helper object comes with two methods, Celsius to Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit to Celsius. These two methods, or these methods, do the conversion from one to the other and return the converted value to the user. Now, if I was another programmer looking at your code and I read this, I would have a good sense of what the helper class is all about. So I would actually have the ability now, hopefully, to use this class effectively. That's the whole point. All right, <clears throat> so this line right here, this is an instance variable you're going to need. String has focus, and for now we're going to set it equal to null, which is like saying empty. It has no value right now. So we've just declared the variable has focus. Then we're going to create this method here called set focus. It takes in a string and it compares the string. If the string equals field one, then has this has focus equals that value of field one. If it equals field two, then this dot has focus has that value of field two. Otherwise, we just set has focus equal to null. 
So in other words, we've created this set focus method, <clears throat> excuse me, so that it only takes one of two possible values, field one and field two. So if I misspell field one, it will set it equal to null. So it has to have this exact spelling. Next, we're going to have another method called getFocus. And the whole point of this method is to return to access the variable has focus, so I can see which field has the focus. Then, here are my two methods. One is called Celsius to Fahrenheit. It returns a double, which is a decimal number, a long decimal number, and it takes a double as a parameter, as an input parameter. So I pass in C, which is the Celsius value. Now the conversion formula from Fahrenheit to Celsius is 9.0 divided by 5.0 times the Celsius value plus 32.0. That's how you convert. I will try to explain the rounding feature, but for right now, I'll just go ahead and type it in as you see it. What this is going to do is this is going to make sure that I have three decimal places of accuracy. So what I did was I multiplied my Fahrenheit by 1,000, and then I rounded it, which turned it into a, a long integer. But then I took that long integer, which has no decimal part, and I divided it again by 1,000. And that's going to make sure, that's going to guarantee <clears throat> that my Fahrenheit value is only three decimal places long. If I didn't do this on line 119, if I didn't do this rounding thing, and then divide by 1,000, I could conceivably get an answer that's 15 digits long, and that's way more than I need. I just don't need 15 digits. So, as an example, if you wanted just two digits, you would change the 1,000 here and here to 100. If you wanted four digits, then you'd change the 1,000 to 10,000, and the 1,000 here to 10,000. The magic formula for transforming from Fahrenheit to Celsius is this. 5 divided by 9 times this number in parentheses. The Fahrenheit value minus 32 comes first. So you have to put that in parentheses so it subtracts that first. Then you multiply by 5 ninths. And then again I'm doing this rounding feature. So okay, this is everything that the class helper has. So if you need to, you can go back and in the video, pause a little bit, type in what you need so that you can get it working. All right, so that's this particular video. We've created the helper class. In the next video, we're now going to use, we're going to create a helper object. And I'm going to try and explain how we create a helper object and then how we can use that helper object. God bless you, wherever you are today.